Hey Wampers, in this video I'll be teaching you our functions while we create a lovely cutting board, put a simple carrot on it using the curve tool, create a knife with a more complex shape and finish it off giving the whole creation some character and lighting. So let's get started, feel free to follow along. So first let's hover over the top bar where we find our basic primitives that we can work with and choose a basic cube. If we hover then over the edge of the cube we can scale it down. If we hold Alt while scaling we will scale equally from both sides. Now in the properties menu at the right we can round our object up. I'm using the full 100% roundness here and then scrolling down we can change our color. I'll go for a fairly light wooden kind of tone for this cutting board and also give it quite a bit of roughness since that kind of wood is usually not very shiny and I'll also save this material straight away so we can apply it to other primitives and unions as well. So then I'm just copying the same shape here, I'm going to the materials menu and click on duplicate and apply on the material that we've just made. I'm then going to edit our duplicated material and call this wood 2 and then change this to a darker color. This darker color will be for the cuts, it will make some nice shading. And then I'm turning this into a negative in the object's properties menu and just bringing it down so we have almost like a little border or like a rectangular cutting into the wood right now. Also bringing the, uh, the roundness down a little bit and increasing goop strength just a little bit to smooth it out. And I'm also just scaling it a bit wider so we have the same borders from all sides. And then what I'm doing now is actually do the opposite and take this uh, copy of the negative, turn it back into a positive and then apply our wood one material again. Like this we basically only have uh, like a little cutting border around which these cutting boards often have and I think it looks really nice, it adds some more detail to it and then also just scaling it again from both sides a bit wider so we have an equal border. Now this is looking very nice, I'm just now going to add one more little detail and speeding this up a little bit because it's the same process again, you can also do this if you want to. I'm just copying one of our shapes again, making like a little extra kind of extension to the board you could say, grouping this together as well a little bit and then copying the same shape but now turning it into a cylinder which is a nice thing that you can do, you can exchange every single primitive with one another. And then I'm basically just copying this cylinder, turning it smaller, using the same technique to make the cut, I'm turning it into a negative. And here as well, for this cut I will also choose our wood 2 color, which is the darker one, just because it really gives it some more depth and some nice shading almost, it's a nice little illusion. And just looks overall a bit better I think. Then when we're happy with it, we can group it together into one union and also give it a name. Now let's come to create the carrot. For this we're using the curves tool and grab that from our primitive menu. We are deleting the second point, go into the curve settings and turn it into a cylinder based curve. Now I'm just scaling this down because it started out quite huge. I'm turning this around and we can rotate our primitive in 45 degrees angles if we hold down shift while rotating. Now I'm just giving it a carrot kind of color, maybe a bit more reddish and also more roughness to it. And I'm also rounding it up a little bit here. And you might wonder why not just grab a sphere instead. And I often choose a cylinder or a cube and then round it up because I feel like it gives us some more shape control and especially over the edges we can still have some if we would like to. I then basically just added another second point to the curve and scaled that down quite a bit. And then going to the curve settings to reduce the goop strength to around 5, this makes the carrot a bit thinner, um, but increasing the density so we have a fully smooth curve as well. And then you can really just play around with what I just basically said before, since it's cylinders you can still scale them a bit longer. And there you can see that really helps to sell the look of the carrot, especially at the bigger part. And then I basically just placed the carrot on the board and now we want to copy our curve 
that we created for the carrot, delete the, the second point, and then use that to create the leaves because there we already have the position, we already have the, the shape, and then we're just turning the color of that curve into a green one and give it more roughness because the leaf and foliage stuff is usually fairly rough. We're then just scaling this down and this will be our first leaf. This will be in the center. We'll make it consist out of three. So we copy this curve point. You can do that by holding Alt as well, by the way. You don't need to press Control Z, Control V. And then in the third point, like in the second point, we scale it a bit bigger. And in the third point, we scale it smaller again. That gives us this nice little, you know, literally, literally a, like a curve from, from bigger to smaller again. And once we're happy with the shape that we have achieved here, we basically just copy the whole curve that we made here for the leaf and then we can basically just rotate it to the right and to the left to complete this carrot. And then just going ahead and giving it another small detail and already cut it in, in half and I'm doing that by basically just getting out a cube that we put in between the carrot obviously in the negative mode and we want to make sure that it's in the same union as our curve points because otherwise it won't be affecting them. And you also want to make sure that it's at the bottom of the scene list because negatives always affect all of the primitives that are above them in the scene list. So I'm then also turning this into a bit of a lighter color than our actual carrot. And then we go on to create the actual knife that cut our carrot. For that we get out another curve primitive and we are turning it into a cylinder again. But this time we are rotating it the opposite direction and we're making sure that it works with the mirror in this way. And we're also going to increase the density. I would always recommend to do that to its fullest. And then we are scaling it quite small or thin. A good base to start with. We can then also test if the mirror works on the x-axis like we want. So we go to the curve settings, activate the mirror, and yeah, it works perfectly. So now we can go on and create the material first. So we click on the first curve point, change our color. For a metalish kind of tone, I usually go in a bluish direction and give it a bit of metalness, maybe a tiny bit of roughness as well still. And then we can basically start. So for the shape of the knife, I basically plan to create it out of a few cylinders. So we copy this curve point. Um, we also want to decrease the group strength again because it becomes quite a bit big blend like that. And then with each point that we go forward with, we basically scale it a bit smaller but bring it back to the top. So it has that curve that the knife has and it becomes sharper towards the like very thin point. So the last point that we create here, we make it quite thin and thanks to us actually scaling it thinner and thinner the further we go, it's automatically getting sharper towards the edge of the end, which is nice. And then we are getting out a cube and we use that to basically cut it for a straight line from the top. So this is a nice uh, base for the top and basically we have the shape that we want here already. And we're using that same cube now to create the actual sharpness of the blade. And for that, we are want wanting to use the mirror so we can do it equally from both sides. So we activate the mirror, we place it to where it's supposed to be, and then we just slightly rotate it to the right so it becomes sharp at the bottom. We just need to be careful to not subtract from the back shape. And this is basically how we create the blade. Now we want to copy our blade curve point um, so we can create the handle from it. So I'm just deleting all the points except the one that I started with. And then we can just change this to a wood color. So I'm giving it a quite rough brown tone here, maybe a bit darker as well. And then I'm turning this into a cube. Then also turning it quite a bit uh, smaller. And here I'm using a cube because of the exact reasons that I've told you before. I want to have some roundness to it, but we can have more shape control with the cube. So I'm basically just rounding up the cube here. And we want to start placing our first point, then just adding another point. And here we can uh, experiment a little bit with how we want to manipulate the second point, because it always transitions um, automatically between the, the two points, or all points that you created basically. 
So I'm keeping the first one quite thin, the second point a bit sharper, uh, wider and bigger. And we see it's not quite in the middle, so we just changed that, basically moving it a little bit. And I think that turned out quite nice. I then just gave it some more character and made it a bit sad looking that it's basically being murdered right now. <laughs> but then coming to the presentation part, we want to turn off the floor grid in the lights and environment panel, go to the backdrop menu at the top bar, clicking on the plus icon here we can change our background color and this is completely up to you. I just recommend to choose a backdrop that's not blending in with your creation too much, but rather being complementary to it or also having some contrast to it so you can actually see your creation well. And then we go to the global lighting and also experiment a bit there. This is really important to try around with because it really affects your materials and colors, basically your whole creation a lot. You can then also play around with the exposure. This is the overall brightness of your scene. And then the last step that we can still do is to basically add some individual lights. And we can do that also clicking on the top bar. This is where we have our lights menu here. You can also still change your global lighting. Um, the rectangular light, for example, is one strong light source that faces in a specific direction. You can, of course, rotate it and face it wherever you would like to. This is a really nice example for a strong light source that maybe is like the sun or uh, like a fake light coming from one direction and it's a really nice way to, to light your scene. This in combination with spherical lights is very powerful and I really recommend you to play around with that. You can also choose a different color for your light as well as play around with the exposure of it. What I can recommend, for example, what I'm doing right now here is give your object a bit of rim light. So it's almost like the light is shining a bit from behind or sometimes it may look good if it's coming from in front of the creation. But basically something that highlights your creation. If we're then fully finished with our creation and happy with how it looks, we can go to the top right where we find the share button and click on publish. This is the publishing menu. First, we can choose a thumbnail picture. Have in mind that you're the camera, so make sure your creation is fairly centered. And then you can also give it a title, some hashtags. Those are labels that people can click on on the discover page. And then you can also choose your copyright settings if you don't want other people to remix your creations or use them in any other way. You can then share it in Share Your Womp and click on Publish to the community. And yeah, here's a final render. I really hope you enjoyed the video and that it was helpful to you. We would love to see your creations on a Discover page, so feel free to give it a go. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.